Great to be with you. Fantastic. I'm so glad to have you in our conversation today. You know, uh, for everyone listening today, Paul Campanero, let me give you a very, very, very quick, powerful intro. He's a team le leader at our market center at Northwest off of 183 in Okanal, manages over 450 realtors who are actively in the field working. And Paul, man, only word I have for you, you're a powerhouse, powerhouse of energy. Now you spark <laughs> up a room, you get people into action. And I've seen the, um, the progress Market Center made the moment you joined and the energy just got lifted, the culture moved. So for those who don't know what your role entails in real estate industry, would you take a moment and kind of just share in the layman language, what is your day-to-day -day work look like in real estate industry? Yeah, so thank you, first of all, for that kind introduction. Um, yeah. That's especially coming from a powerful entrepreneur and business person like yourself and Roger. Um, that's quite a compliment. So I'm so, first of all, super grateful to be, um, that I get to serve agents like yourself. And, and um, it's been a blessing, especially with how much I've gotten to learn. Because uh, taking a role in management or in um, leadership in real estate in general usually means a step back uh, in many ways in the real estate industry, especially financially when you get to uh, run a team like I did. I owned a team in Las Vegas, Nevada. We were doing 150 plus transactions a year at the height of our business um, in the last housing crisis. So this is... Um, uh, uh, tragedy or, or uh, moments of difficulty are, are not something something new to me and I know we'll get into that but um, uh, leading agents has been such an opportunity to be able to learn um, about myself and, and about leadership and so that's the primary thing that I get to do at the market center is lead people so uh, my first priority to the to ownership is to grow the market center like any other business uh, the the goal is to grow in some way in, in some fashion to be able to create growth and then the second priority is to is to grow the agents business so growth of the market center can occur in lots of different ways as far as financial or expansion more agents um, mm -hmm. to grow systems and models um, mm -hmm. to, to grow in leadership uh, but certainly to grow financially ownership always wants to see profit so that's yeah. the numero uno yeah. absolutely um, every business is about profits so Paul you just said something really powerful you said uh, every business is about growth and it seems like growth is essential for us to move, move our vision further, move our company further, people along, right? So in, in my observation, nobody prepared for a disruption like this. It just happened, right? Like March 15th, shelter shutdown just came in. So you guys are at leadership level running a proper business. At some level to be successful, we have to follow a model, right? And as nobody was prepared for this disruption, what kind of adversities that you guys ran into and how did you pivot from it? Because you guys are killing it with your outreach to agents, outreach to community, Red Day is coming, those conversations are still happening. You know, it's a big event for Keller Williams. So yeah. I would love to hear from you, like what adversities you guys ran into that you think a common business owner or uh, our general people can relate to? Yeah. So first of all, um, leading a market center of almost 500 agents is like herding cats sometimes. <laughs> so um, having a leadership team. So I have a staff of 10, uh, myself and Michelle Busby. Uh, we're both uh, equally in charge of the Northwest Market Center in Austin, Texas. Um, some of the things initially, so I, I heard just the other day and I was reminded that we, we don't rise to the level of our, we don't rise to our goals. We fall to our uh, systems. We don't rise to our goals, we fall to our systems. So how good are our systems? Now, uh, running a team of 100, uh, 150 plus transactions a year as a realtor is a lot different than running an office where sales volume is almost a billion dollars, right? Yeah. But at, the, at its core though still is systems and models. And yeah. essentially a large office is uh, almost like a mega team of sorts in regards to having uh, people who are in charge of certain things and overseeing them and running collectively as a unit with one mind and one body. Right. And so uh, systems and models that we have to be able to uh, communicate clearly, to be able to create points of connectivity so that the community can be able to come together and not just hear the voice, 
but engage the voice. And so some of the first things very, that happened essentially was, okay, how are we going to connect and communicate with the agent body now that we're physically not able to be in the office? Yeah. That, um, our workflows now change because um, accounting is there but not there. Mm -hmm. um, the board mm -hmm. is there but not there. Productivity coaches who support agents is there but not there. And uh, really regrouping to figure out how we were going to do that. So uh, I, I always say mindset, mindset begins and ends with uh, – everything begins and ends with mindset. Yeah. Well, in, in, in leadership, that's true, but, but then everything um, uh, rises and falls with leadership. So with leadership, it's really about the, the conversation and, and first the conversation that leaders are having with themselves and not freaking out with, okay, uh, doom and gloom, uh, fear and anxiety, because look, let's face it, all of us experience that at some level as all far as yeah. mm -hmm. what uncertainty was and, and what are we going to do about it? And so uh, first uh, recalibrating myself back to a center of of, um, of peace and of, uh, of contribution and growth and figuring out, okay, look, I, I, I come from a good place. I may not know what to do right now, but I know that I'm going to uh, connect with people and collaborate with people so that we can serve people, continue to serve people, serve people differently. Okay, now that I've come to that, um, that point of reference, now I can go to my staff and go, okay, um, how are we going to do this? Because oftentimes with leadership, it's, it's less about I have the great ideas versus let me collaborate so that uh, synergistically we can, we can come up with great ideas yeah. and figure out how are we going to connect? How are we going to serve and, uh, and, and figure that out? So that was the first big real challenge is figuring out, okay, how are we going to adjust and what are the ideas so that we can do that? Because any one person is not going to be the answer. So it sounds like from your conversation that like I'm trying to find a common ground for everyone. It seems like when this shelter shutdown happened and we officially knew in Austin, Texas that, okay, COVID has hit, you know, it is a national news. Actions are being taken at city level, state level, national level. It seems like everybody for a moment froze, like reality hit. And from your conversation, it almost sounds like that the whole team that you work with and the staff you work with, you guys acknowledged the problem and then you guys became solution oriented. You instantly started focusing on, okay, how? How are we gonna make that happen? And collaborated everybody's brain. So going through this process, Paul, talk to me about what did you find out about yourself that you didn't know before? And what did you discover about your team around you that you never saw it coming? You were like, gosh, I never knew they had this characteristic. <laughs> so let me rewind just for a second because I think yeah. a lot of a lot of business owners, especially um, if we're talking to business owners, uh, realtors, entrepreneurs, is um, the fact that um, are you first taking that time for yourself and your business to work on the business versus in the business? Because it's so often, especially for successful people, to grind hard and work hard mm -hmm. and not take that time to work on the business and really spend that. So we had already had a foundation as far as how we, uh, uh, when, um, when we, when we huddled and, and how we, uh, how we interacted and communicated with each other individually with each, each divisions of, uh, within each division of the team. And then once, once, once the, um, once the earthquake hit, right, the, the, the COVID and okay, now we got an emergency, we got, we got problems, we got issues, we got challenges, how are we going to do with it? it? That foundation was already set to figure out, okay, let's huddle back up. All right. What's happening there? Well, what's happening there, there, and there, and where were we, where are we, and then where are we going? Oh, and wow. that, that's a, that's a fundamental concept for anybody that's, that's um, evaluating their businesses to go, okay, where were, where was I? Where am I? Where are we going? When that's happen when that happens collectively, even if you're a single agent or a solopreneur, um, uh, being able to have that conversation with other people to be able to create that synergy and energy and to mastermind and brainstorm ideas to figure, to, to get clarity with where, where, uh, where was I, where am I, and where am I going is essential to be able to deal with not just um, a conflict resolution or problem solving, uh, but with, um, uh, with, with um, collaboration so that that happens more efficiently and more effectively. So well, what I learned was uh, that um, we can do things when we have to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so but, say that again, say that again. You're saying we do things when we have to. We so can do things when we have to. So uh, um, there's a saying, um, 
uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, yeah, so we are, are we saying like, let's just be honest here, right? So are we saying that we all ended up pivoting to a point of our potential that we couldn't have probably otherwise taken those actions uh, if nothing would have hit, but the adversity hit, emergency hit, we got into action and we did things that could have taken a longer time otherwise. That necessity was the mother invention. We cannot go to work, so we have to work remotely. So how are we going to do that more efficiently and effectively? Um, what were measures that we were going to need to take to yeah. be able to communicate and connect and work together, even though we can't physically be together? And wow. that, created, that created a lot of... Um, uh, opportunity for people on the team to rise to the occasion in leadership with uh, being able to create conversation and to um, uh, to explore ideas on okay how are we going to do things differently and still yet hold some level of accountability and efficiency so that we can serve the the uh, we can maintain the integrity of customer service and for me it's 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 for the for the market center leadership it's serving it's serving the agents yeah. How do we, maintain that yeah. because uh, there's checks coming into the office every day. There's mail and deliveries still that are arriving. There's yeah. people's uh, closings that need to be processed. And, and how do we do that when there needs to be a higher level of service besides email? And so um, that yeah. was an interesting path to be able to. Yeah, because contractual deadlines didn't move. They all stayed. Right. right. <laughs> The country shut down, but the contractual deadlines for delivery of checks, funding, closing, yeah. all was on time. People's livelihood was online, right? Like u hauls are parked in the driveways to get tech, take the keys to the next house and still yeah. move, regardless of if you have a mover or not. So business was as in normal, but the country shut down. Wow. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's, it was kind of cool to see... Um, and now in my own way, I experienced it where I became the short sale king in Vegas because 90% of the deals in Vegas at one point were either REOs, bank, yeah. bank owned properties or short sales. So uh, I heard once that uh, uh, he who can solve the biggest problems gets the biggest paychecks. And, and, and people don't realize that about realtors and certainly entrepreneurs, right? And, and which is why so many of them end up, the attrition rate so high, so many of them end up leaving the business or leaving becoming mm -hmm. entrepreneurs is that there's a lot of problems to solve and, and that yeah. deals with a lot of emotions and, and when you when you compound that with the fact that people are freaking out because they don't want to get sick and die how am I going to deal with that with my team with my community with my uh, clients my, my uh, people who I serve that's another level of leadership and, and, and uh, you know we're blessed really at Keller Williams to have the MREA model and, and Gary Keller who who's one of the best leaders that, and look, I've only been Keller Williams a couple of, you know, three years and change. So yeah. I wasn't Fred Keller. I've been in real estate for almost 20 years to be able to see a true leader exemplify rising to the occasion and not freaking out and not cutting 20% of its staff and figuring out how can we be more efficient and effective men. I mean, it's amazing to be that close to someone who's modeling that so that I can do it so that our agents can then go do it. it because look, leadership in this world is at a scarcity. Mm. Talent in this world is at a scarcity and scarcity. to be able to connect to people who are doing that. And, and whether you're a solopreneur, you're an individual agent, look, I got to figure out who's my next who. Yep. Who do I need to be connecting to and brainstorming with so that I can go serve more people and be an exemplary, be a model to other people. And then when that light shines, man, that's when the whole tide rises and everybody's life just gets better. Yeah, because you instantly, um, uh, it seems like from your conversation, when people are thinking of who's my next conversation, you're moving from what you know, you know what has gone wrong and what is our limitation, and you move turning towards possibility. And that's yeah. limitless. And yeah. more possibilities show up, more people we talk to who are making things happen. And with what you know, and now what you know new, new resources are coming together and people are moving forward. Now, yeah. you said something like everybody, everybody freaks out. In your opinion, what do you think is the biggest key difference between a person who stays in fear longer than the other person? The biggest difference between someone who stays in fear longer than another person? Yeah. I think it's, uh, that, that, that question wasn't on the script, actually, Rosa. You didn't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. 
I'm going to spark the creativity out of you. You know, let's talk about it. Like, this, is it this real? Is, yeah, yeah. This, this is something that's come up actually. A few, uh, this is an interesting topic because what differentiates somebody who uh, has experienced similar uh, circumstances, whether personally or professionally, between one person who goes, you know, super successful and another person who's super not successful. Hmm. Uh, I, I personally think that, um, you know, choices at the end of the day is what differentiates all of us, all of our choices. And in a scenario like this, when talking about this specifically in, in, in a professional um, environment is, um, what are your habits? What have you been conditioned to? And even though, even if you may not be some super high level exec or you haven't made a million dollars, the fact that you may be more grounded spiritually um, or may be more grounded um, uh, in, 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 uh, in energy wise, like you, you, you understand, take deep breaths, um, uh, take time to think. Uh, you know, there, there's uh, spiritual proverbs about be be quick to listen and slow to speak, right? Yeah. Uh, to be able to um, deal with things more effectively. Because I think that, that, that all of us um, are nervous or freak out or have uh, doubts or anxieties or fear. That's just natural because it, it's just the flesh, right? It's just yeah. part of our physical human experience. But I think that um, that's still a conditioning factor when we take more time with prayer or meditation or uh, um, finding ways to, to be centered in who we were created to be, which is loving human beings, mm. uh, created to connect and to serve. Mm. And when we can continue to recalibrate back to that. And, and because we all, we all um, get knocked off from that center, it, it's how, how, quick do I get back to it? For some of us who are super enlightened, it may take just a few seconds. But for other of us, others of us who are like super challenged, it, can take <laughs> it takes a long time, you know, like, because there's so much coming at you, like media, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, like, um, I, I have very, very been disciplined with my uh, social media time. As you can tell, it takes me a lot, very long time to respond sometimes. Um, what I have learned is that it picks up on the newsfeed that you stay the longest on. If I'm looking at a certain type of news, the next feed I start getting is a very similar data. Your screen froze, but I'm going to keep talking as if you're able to hear me. <laughs> I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, right? Okay, yeah. uh, but you have a smiley face. Don't worry. You're going to be okay. All right, All right there you go. You're moving now. Um, mm -hmm. So if when so much is going at you, dinging at you, Facebook notification, Instagram notification, news, feed, uh, CNN, YouTube, like everything is about the fear. It is quite challenging if you're not tapped into something bigger than yourself to be dragged down with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think now more than ever, and I've personally experienced this at a, um, at a very high level, is um, uh, being intentional and, and really, for, for me, aggressive in um, emptying faster, being still, more often, uh, I've, I've been doing a, a, some reading and this, this, this one continued thought keeps coming up and I think the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, keeps putting this in front of me. Be still, be still, be still. Because there's so much coming at me, even now more than ever, is that there's been this overwhelm at times and understanding like release, empty. Yeah. Like, yes. because th that is just uh, static nice. or that's it's not who I am. It's not that's who not, I am. Yeah. It's like, you know, um, I'm going to go on a bunny trail because you encouraged a thought here. Um, I read a lot and Roger and I were coming to this conclusion that no thought is original. Hmm. Any thought I have is not mine. It is hmm. the information that I'm collecting. I'm recycling with my own values and beliefs. And sometimes the story becomes pretty if my own values and beliefs are aligning positively with that information. And if not, then all of a sudden it's scary. But physically, mm. nothing has happened. Like 99% of the things we fear about never happen. And mm. I'm not by no means denying the pandemic we are in and uh, what we're dealing with. But ultimately, from that, we are also imagining personally what could go wrong. And yeah. everybody is, right? So um, let's talk about stillness for a minute. Are you reading the book Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday? No. God. Okay, mm. I just picked up that book. We got to yeah. accept that. Still, you know, it's funny you talk about stillness. I just talked about stillness with somebody else. You know, mm -hmm. like the moment you are still, um, you've mentioned meditation as well. Are you into meditation? Like, are you practicing it every day? Like, yeah, tell me about meditation. it. How is yeah, it? 
Uh, well, certainly, first of all, the, this full disclosure, I'm not, uh, you know, some uh, meditation specialist. I don't certainly do yeah. it as often as I would like to, but um, certainly taking some quiet, you know, I, the book um, uh, Miracle Morning by Hel, Hel Elrod, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I certainly don't do that, but but I do think there's some fundamental elements of that as far as starting your day, and I and I and I certainly have realized that my better days are days when I started with uh, prayer and meditation to be able to, um, and some visualization as well. I think visualization is huge, right? Because mm -hmm. the mind can't really tell the difference between reality and uh, unreality. So something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's very important to be able to understand that there's, there's just, there's so much coming at us every day that when I can start from a place that is even, um, somewhat cognizant either uh, uh, consciously or subconsciously of being at peace and being yep. centered coming from love and contribution that your day is just going to go better than it would if you didn't. Yeah. And it goes back to what you mentioned a few minutes ago is that when, when I was asking the question, what, what is the biggest difference you have seen between a person who stays in the fear longer than the other person? And you were saying is like how aligned that person is. Mm. You know, their daily habits, daily choices, how yeah. aligned we are is deciding in that moment how quickly we're going to be able to navigate through this or we're going to get stuck there with the complications and the stories we have about all the experiences we have gone through. Um, so going back, yeah. to, going back to where we are, you have been through this before, right? In Las Vegas, Nevada, market hit, like it was the toughest market I remember. And in that crisis, your team and your business thrived. Mm. Compared to the 2008 crisis and comparing where we are right now, no crisis has been the same. Like I've been trying to read and track back. I was like, there's no way you can predict a crisis. It can hit mm. any way, right? But there's yeah. a cyclical pattern to it. So yeah. just, just because the fact that you have this experience within you, uh, for the people who have not gone through a similar crisis before, what do you think, two questions for you. Number one, what do you think society needs differently this time than what they needed back in 2008? And how do you find this crisis different than the one that we had back in 2008? Yeah. So we can have some thinking time. I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we take a commercial break? Because <laughs> commercial break would be fantastic. I think it's going to happen. Well, soon. Yeah. You you splice in Rosie's cooking channel, and this week yes. on Rosie, <laughs> I cook thoughts. <laughs> I like it. I cook thoughts. Uh -huh. um, so the first one's probably a little bit more difficult to answer. So maybe I'll try to tackle that one last, which was okay. um, what. Um, what, 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 what's, what needs to be done? What can you do differently? And what, what are they doing? So, the, so let's talk with the, about uh, the questions again. So 2008 and 2020, we had both times were crisis, right? Mm -hmm. We were hit like that. And 2008 crisis was very different than the one we have right now. So mm -hmm. what do you think society needs differently now? Like looking back, we now know what society needed the most to push through it, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think we need differently now considering the pandemic we are in? And uh, to push through this smoothly and navigate through it without creating too much mental stress. And second, what is your experience that's different this time in industry-wise than back yeah. in 2008? So when you say differently, are you is that in reference to like? Um, I mean, that's a, that's a broad question, right? Like, uh, yeah. you could get what what needs to be done differently societally, like government, and or you could be done. It could be what could be done differently. Um, socially, like uh, yep. the relational uh, yep. aspects of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, because I do think that um, like one of the big things, one of the big problems that happened last time was that there was, a, um, uh, there was two programs that worked very, very intimately with that were helping people. The, um, the government home modification program for people whose properties were upside down in value. And then the, uh, the short sale oriented program that a government, government funded program to help people whose properties were upside down and uh, forgiving debt. And all of those things were good, but they were, they were too late and not effective enough. And so watching the government take um, some uh, early strides as far as uh, how they're going to help people, you know, and I'm not going to get into the, I, I don't want yeah. to make this whole thing about like what that is and how that, what that is. That, that was good to see them take um, strides early and fast. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and then, and maybe to, it'd be really encouraging to see, um, uh, to assess what impact that's had or lack of imp impact that's had and, and then what else needs to be done. So it was encouraging to see that they, they, they moved quickly, 
okay, now what else? Because um, what's differently this time is the, the fact that this kind of smacked us right in the forehead real quick. The, the other one, it, it, it came relatively quickly, but not as quickly as this. I mean, we're talking mm. in a matter of a couple of weeks, uh, there being yeah. uh, millions of people unemployed. Like, unemployed. Oh my people, gosh, yeah. Right? Like, mm. and, and it was different then, which was, and I've had a lot of conversations with agents and with leaders across the country because I, I, being in Las Vegas and being uh, from New York originally, I have relationships from coast to coast. And I've been calling people and asking people, people much smarter than me, much further down the road than yeah. me, what do you think? And, and, I, and I've gotten answers all across the board, but the, the matter of the fact is, Things were different then as far as you're talking about millions of people in bad loans. Yeah. That took literally seven, six to seven years to flush a majority of that out. And there's still people out there with those loans. Yeah. It, it, those are. Exist, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about, um, and, and people became unemployed and there was, uh, but we're, we're now we're talking about a, a punch right in the forehead, oh. unemployment right now and there's probably and there's more to come for certain for certain and i think that's going to be a different impact understanding that like with what you're saying we're, we're we don't, we don't really know the real ramifications of what that's going to mean economically with people not having jobs or not having not getting a paycheck for you know three to six months i think we're you know, I don't, I, I'm not, I want to be doom and gloom here, but like, I think we're in for more pain, uh, especially here in Austin, Texas, than you guys saw before, because before you didn't have as much um, happening as far as uh, bad loans and the, and the market going super high and super yeah, low. Yeah, Austin was and, not impacted that much. Mm -hmm. And I do think that, look, um, like real estate is uh, local, um, economies are local too. And so um, some, some economies, like the Las Vegas economy, they're going to be screwed uh, a lot faster and a lot harder than the Austin economy, which is more diversified because, because they're travel based. Yeah. They're travel based. So naturally, yeah. The, yeah, big, where the restrictions are the highest, any industry feeding through that revenue is going to be impacted the most. It's natural. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, th th but I do believe that there are going to be elements of regardless of those factors of, of those circumstances that, um, there may be more of an economic impact in a shorter time frame versus strung out over four or five years. Like we were before six ah. or seven years compared mm -hmm. like with some of the, some of the, some of the more difficult markets like Florida and Arizona and California and Vegas. Um, but, but in a more, maybe as bad or worse in a shorter time frame. So it may seem worse, because it's compacted into like 12 months or maybe 18 months and it's going to get, it could get ugly. Mm. So the one who was mentally prepared. So now, uh, Paul, what did you find out about yourself? Like during this time, we all discover, I know you are big into self-reflection and growth and uh, you're like force for um, positivity and energy in our market center. So uh, I really wanted to talk to you about and about this, like through this time, we all discovered something about ourselves, right? What did mm -hmm. you think you found out about yourself that you didn't know you had it in you? <laughs> I don't know if it was what did I discover about myself as much as it was um, that, I, that I had in me versus what did I rediscover of myself yeah. that, I, that I needed to be reminded of, which is something that even to today, right now today, I'm experiencing as far as, um, being reminded what's really important and what's really important is my family and, and I've been working harder and longer than I have in the past and uh, to detriment because I'm one of those people that can work as hard or harder than anybody and in the last there's been days where I you know I've told my wife I'm like uh, I'm I'm working too hard like this is not healthy um, because what matters is health right because without yeah. that we don't have anything yeah. and then and for me, my family, my wife and my kids and, and, and finding ways to prioritize it. Cause as soon as I get off this call, we're going out for a drive and we're going to get out somewhere. Yeah. Just go. Like, I don't know where you're going to go. Just go. go. Just go. <laughs> Just go. We, Sunday we went, we, we went out to the park and we, we walked around and we went hiking and we did it in a, in a, in a, in a precautious way so that we weren't around people and yada, yada. But, but like um, taking those moments and understanding like nothing means nothing unless I have what's important. And what's important is that at the end of my life, it's, the bank account's not going to matter. You're going to be sitting there going, where's my wife? Where's my kids? Where's my lover? Where's my, where's my brother? Where's my mother? And, and, and knowing that, being reminded that, Wow, it's about them and like, and, and I have to fight for that 
because because everything else, like you said, all that other static outwardly is is pulling from me. Mm-hmm. And I have to I have to be intentional and fight for that. And then I'm gonna be honest, I, I have not been good at that the last few weeks. And my wife, I'm blessed to have my wife who who has a strong voice and says, Paul. We got to go do something. We got to get out of here. We got to take care of ourselves. It wakes you up. Yeah. Now, that's, that's what our relationship, that's what the beautiful thing about relationships is. I think uh, people, um, I've often seen people want to run away from adversity, right? I, I read beautiful stories over this last 30, 40 days, um, you know, reading great books. And uh, I would love your opinion on this. What I'm learning is that a surfer who is really skilled is never hoping to ride the lowest wave. They're waiting for the biggest wave because that's when they get to really test their potential. So yeah. uh, hearing you today that people who are prepared, who have been always feeding their mind with good stuff and aspiring for, for greater things than themselves and have been tapped into the environment and people who are going to stretch their limits, mm. they're prepared. They yeah. know how to navigate the adversity. And this adversity has all put a reset button on each one of us and reminded us of what's important. Yeah, like, and... We go through so much to find that and we're able to find that without any harm physically right now. Look, fire purifies, right? Wow. Fire purifies. purifies. And so when the heat goes high, it melts away all the impurities. And so we we need the fire to be able to purify us. And having gone through, uh, because look, um, 2009, 10, 11, being in Las Vegas was one of the worst places I could possibly be. My life almost fell apart, not just professionally, personally. My life almost fell apart. I mean, literally, my life fell apart. Having endured that fire and having been purified from that fire, I have no fear. I have zero fear of this moment. Zero. Zero. You've been there, done that, no way to expect. I'm anxious, like, like, get me at it, let me at it so that I can do something because I know I'll survive. People buy or sell real estate. I'm yeah. a powerful communicator. I come from contribution at a high level. I have value. It's just a matter of engagement and recalibrating back who God created me to be, which was someone to share love, share light, and come from contribution at a high level. Fantastic. Paul, you, there's... I don't think you need words in your presence to describe you are. Your presence exuberates these qualities. And trust me, we are so grateful to have, I was looking forward to this conversation to be honest. I was like, where do I get Paul in? And God, you really came through. Today, I have so much to reflect back to from your conversation. It took me back all the years we have spent together. And uh, I can't wait for people to hear this message because at every level, every business person, every family member, every father, every mother, sister, daughter can relate to what you just said. Yeah. You know, fire purifies. If we all yeah. reflect back and take fear out of our mind and look at any adversity we have ever went through, something new came out of it that we never yeah. knew before and we all emerged to be better beings. So yeah. um, it's time to reflect and make a right choice. Yeah. On what well, I, got, I, got, I got goosebumps right there. I got a little goosebumps right there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we're talking good stuff then. Awesome. Well, Paul, um, anything you want the world to know? I mean, um, look, at the end of the day, I know I hate to sound so existential, but um, the matter of the fact is, is that um, this whole thing, you know, um, Corona, sales, relationships, problems, divorce, bank, I mean, just any, anything, anything, anything that's tough or bad or hard or it, look at the end of the day, like I have to find a way back to love. I have to find a way back to loving myself because that's, that might be the hardest thing for some people is being able to love yourself and find ways to be able to love yourself. Because I think, you know, that's something that I know I'm constantly in struggle with to remind myself. My Again, I'm lucky to be in a relationship where there's good perspective. And trust me, we're just as crazy as anybody else. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, we're, but, but, but to, to, um, to be able to um, uh, transparently and earnestly be able to speak to each other as far as reminding each other that, hey, you are good enough. Hey, you are a good person. Hey, you are, you do have something to bring and something to contribute because when, when that's the core and the center of who we are, making money, productivity, efficiency, look, those are all byproducts. Those yeah. are all byproducts. It's yeah. All this one has to be the best. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. And, 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 and we all have some uniqueness as far as who we are and who we were created to be to come from contribution. And even the, the smallest ways are, are, are so grand in the, uh, in the aspect of, of what's happening in this world and, and what that means. That little piece, uh, a little bit's a lot of it. Your yeah, little is a lot of it. Is a lot of it. Is a lot of it. <laughs> Yeah, you have Paul. This is exactly why nobody is doing what you are doing, and they can do the way you are doing it. And we are so grateful for you to bring this change in the mindset. You know, even if somebody's day was better than before by talking to you, you have made your difference. Yeah. What they make out of it is our responsibility. But you have yeah. done your part, and you're doing a fantastic job with people and agents. Um, I don't even have to speak much. Your work, your work speaks for you. You know, uh, so I, let me just tell you a little something because I, I think it's very important for people to make this relevant for the little things yeah. that they do. I know one of, uh, um, one of my affirmations when I used to cold call because I didn't know anybody in Las Vegas, I had to cold call. I hated cold calling just as much as anybody else, but it is the only way I could survive in Vegas. Yeah, look for business, yeah. Huh? It was the only way. So I, I had affirmations, right, that I'd say to myself and I'd say, I, um, I'd have them in front of me and I'd recite them and I'd be reciting them to keep my mindset into doing it because I had a five-year-old and a two-year-old and I didn't have very much money in the bank and I, and I was really living by the skin of my teeth and I used to say, um, I, um, I bring value to every call, big or small. And, and you might know if you heard me say that. And, then, oh, and no. The concept behind that was like, look, I don't want to, I don't want to convince people to do anything. I don't want to try to sell anything. I want to have good conversations. And if I can have a good conversation and nothing comes from it besides the other person on the other end of the line says, thank you, or have a nice day, or we leave on amicable terms. It was just a friendly conversation. Then mission accomplished. Wow. And when those Little things add up, add up, add up. It's all those little inches that add up to my contribution. But I got to start small. And if I can just bring value to one tiny little conversation, and there's a little bit of love there. Mm. Yep. Yeah. When you stand from a place of love, your impact is big. You don't need yep. power because you're speaking from a place yep. of love. Thank you so much, Paul. I can't wait for world to see this. You really, really, really did not let me down. This was awesome. And it's I can't tough, wait man. to do more of these. I'll let you know when we are sure. online. You will be tagged. Everybody would know. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank, Thank you so much. much. All right. Bye-bye.